featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And now your hosts, Dick Lutz and Mike Moore. Hello again, everybody, and welcome into another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, and we are looking for our third participant in the Tournament of Champions. Hard to believe we're in the third ladder series already. Dave Hodge sits atop the uh, temporarily seated uh, Tournament of Champions with a lot more to go. He's at 401, and John Winchell, who you saw last week, is in the bottom position at 349. It's going to be pretty difficult to imagine him being much higher than probably sixth or seventh place. Over the course of the next four weeks, you will see five of the greatest Candlepin bowlers in the world. World. And here are our first competitors this afternoon, ladder series number three. First, our number five seed, making his first appearance on Channel 50 from Leicester, Massachusetts. Let's welcome David Dupuy. David Dupuy's actually been around quite a while, but it's his first visit to WNDS. Averaging 129, his high single is 203, high triple of 495. He does his bowling out in your hometown, Dick of Worcester, at Colonial Lanes. I didn't know you knew I was from Worcester. Yeah, you've let us know that. Number four seed from Winthrop, Massachusetts, with a 679 in the roll-off. Let's say hello to veteran Joe Stella. <laughs> Joe Stella is back with an average of 125, high single of 201. A new high triple of 487. He does his bowling where he has for many years in East Boston at Central Park Lanes. It's David Dupuy and Joe Stella, our first match of the third ladder series. We're coming back to Lita Lanes right after this on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Over the course of the next four weeks, you will see five of the best Candlepin bowlers in the world. And our series for ladder series number three, there are the five bowlers. Anthony Pastore, the number one seed. Rich Lottie at number two. Hawk Hallis, number three. Joe Stella and Dave Dupuy are bowlers this afternoon. David Dupuy will be first to bowl from Lita Lanes in Nashville. We're set to go with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Here you get a look at David Dupuy from Leicester, Massachusetts, right outside of Worcester. His first ball, and we're underway. Dave's first time on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. No stranger to TV life, though, on the old Channel 5 show ten times or so, and he's had success on cable as well. So he's no stranger to the bright lights of television, and he starts off with a nine box. As a matter of fact, he won $15,000 first prize on a cable show back in 2002. He said, yeah, the government took their share out of that. I'll bet they did. 15000 He broke up the four horsemen on the left side. He has the one, the two, and the four still standing. Ooh, I thought he was going to make the shot. That looked perfect when it left his hand. That extra piece of wood kind of uh, deflected the ball. Couldn't get down to the two and the four. Dave Bulls out of Colonial Lanes in Worcester. Nick Anderson's establishment. He's been bowling 39 of his 41 years on the planet. He started young. I was uh, six or seven, I think, when I started in Detroit. How old were you? Your first time you I picked was up young. a bowling ball. I don't. Re I, I really don't recall. I was young. Joe Stella, will the five pin go? It teeters, it totters, it still stands. Joe from Winthrop, Massachusetts on the North Shore, starts off with a spare. Joe bowls out of Central Park Lanes in East Boston. He's been bowling 27 of his 42 years. He's been on Channel 58 times on the old Channel 5 show, four times on singles, five times on doubles. So again, he's familiar with the lights of television. Look at this shot. Ooh, he almost made it. Playing the wood off to the left because he had the sleeper wood, the two and the eight. Couldn't get the messenger over to the 10 pin, so it should be uh, a rather routine 10 in the second frame. It'll be a, ra a rather routine nine. <laughs> yeah, didn't mean to jinx you, Joe, sorry. Leicester, Massachusetts, as I mentioned, for those of you not familiar with it, just outside of Worcester on Route 9, headed toward the western part of the state. 
And you spell Lester without looking. L e i s l e i c e s t e r. It's not L i e. No, it's L e i. Yeah. Right. I'm familiar with it. I. Uh, my father grew up in Spencer, which is mm -hmm. just beyond Leicester, right? And I had an uncle who lived in Leicester. So is that everybody's dream who lived in Worcester was to make enough money to move to Leicester? <laughs> lovely area, lovely town. Home of one of the great restaurants is in Is that the England. one that's a kind of a gothic place? The castle. Yes, I have, I have eaten there, and it's awesome. There's a strike by David Dupuis in the fourth grade. I can't think of the name of it. It's called The Castle. Oh. And there's are right still operating? Right on Oh, sure is. I've been there for 10 it's years. Our, when I was a kid, it was a dairy bar. It was a small dairy bar with, with you know, stools around sure. the bar and a restaurant, that type yeah. of thing. And I wish I could remember the name of the family that operates it. Lovely family. And uh, they just grew the place, and then they built a real, honest-to-goodness-looking castle, stone castle sure. restaurant. Fabulous place. Fabulous and the food restaurant. is good the one time I... Great place. Right on a little lake, which is right behind it. We used to go out and feed the fish in the lake, get clam rolls and eat the clams and take the bread out and feed the fish. <laughs> it was great. Kind of like what you do at Kelly's there in Revere is you get some kind of a roll and you just feed the, feed the seagulls that weigh, what, 30 and 40 pounds each. Joe with 35 through 3. The scores in the roll-off were just ridiculous. David Dupuy, the number five seed at 675. That's, Joe had a 679. Yeah. Hawk Callis, the number three seed at 687. Rich Lottie at 695 for number two seed. And Anthony Pastore, the number one seed, a 707. Get out of town. We don't get that many 700s. I remember one time uh, Mike Morgan had a 750 qualifying score. Joe at 45 through four, and now David Dupuy working on a strike. Right on the head pin, and not much to show for it. The triple strike jackpot, by the way, starts off with 700 bucks in it. We have $40 in the bonus ball contest at the end of every match. There's a good, uh, good effort by David there to convert. He has an eight fill in the strike. Well, you mentioned the scores, uh, the bowlers that didn't make it, who had some pretty good scores. I'll mention those to you here in just a second. Uh, include uh, Bob Betancourt, who had 673. Imagine 673. Not and you, qualifying. You don't make the show. Joe Tavernis, even at 652, which is often right on the borderline of making it, 652 is usually good enough. Uh, he came in eighth. Uh, who else? Bruno DeFeo, uh, who we saw recently, was number 12. Tough scoring this time getting in. Deb Regan was on number 26. Spare for David Dupuy in the sixth frame. His second mark of the first string. Dick, speaking of Deb Regan, we seem to see her every year in the mixed doubles competition, which will begin one month from now. Always look forward to that. We do. Joe Stella right in the pocket, and here's the five pin. Surrounded by wood. Not surrounded enough by the wood. The roadblock wood, uh, a bowler who might be new to this game would say, how does that happen? There's a, a lot, of game. lot of space down there where the ball and the pin can uh, deflect and not hit anything. It's what makes the game the great game that it is. Hope you had a chance to see the article on Candlepin Bowling in the calendar section of this past week's. Actually, as we taped the show, it was a couple of weeks ago in the Boston Globe. Very nicely done, featured several different... Uh, bowling establishments and events going on at those establishments give the sport a little life and Joe missed another one two makeable spares left on the table by Joe Stella 10 box we've got a lot of mail and emails to get to and I want to get right to one topic nip it right in the bud because we will never lie to you on this program but we had a lot of feedback a lot of emails and mail for about about uh, production of the show and quality of the production of the show we've had some problems some technical problems to be sure in particular there was a show a couple of weeks ago that 
flickered badly, we're told, for the entire show. Made it difficult to watch. We appreciate your perseverance and dedication to the show, and we understand your concerns. We are attempting to address them. Our technical staff has been on it, and we hope that we do not have similar problems in the future, but we received several communications from our viewers expressing concerns about the production of the show, and we want you to know that we are aware of it and are attempting to take care of it as best we can. So it's a big split for David Dupuy. The four, eight, and 10 with a piece of wood. Not too far from the eight pin, but not really touching anything. You'd have to be really be lucky to make this one. Nope. He tried to do a couple yep. things at the same time. Tried to hit the wood, tried to hit the split the pins. Just couldn't quite accomplish it. And he'll take a nine box. 87 through eight for David Dupuy. Joe Stella is a UPS courier driver in Somerville. If I'm not mistaken, Hawk Hallis, who will be here next week, also works for UPS. I believe that is correct. Hawk Hallis, who we haven't seen in over five years. Well, Hawk works for Federal Express. I beg your pardon. <laughs> so, so it could be the battle of the, uh, the courier services next week. That piece of wood spinning yeah, down in the lane. Is it out of bounds? Apparently not. Not a factor. So we're going to let it stay there. And Joe will miss the shot. Nine box for Joe. He's at 73. A five pin lead for David Dupuy. Mm, missing the head pin on that one. Joe with a mark opportunity here. It's a tough shot. The one, the three, the seven, and the eight. Got a shot at it, though. Not going to make it. In the audience today watching Joe Stella is his good friend Ed Woodside, who he beat last time around in February here on WNDS, Candleton Stars and Strikes. And that will be a nine box for Joe. He's at 82. Five pin lead for David Dupuy. Through eight boxes of our first string. It's a three string match, as you know by now. But we're always attracting new viewers, so we explain as we go. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continually scores high ratings on WNDS TV, and we appreciate the fact that you are there watching. Have an email birthday wish, Geraldine Woodward. At her 79th birthday, November 17th. Watch out. Ooh, it almost went. We didn't get the email in time to, to get that on before her birthday. She's been watching our show, Dick, since it first started airing. And before she watched, of course, the Channel 5 show years ago, she was even a participant on Candlepins for Cash with the great Kamir. We had another email from a Candlepins for Cash participant. Yes, I have that I've somewhere here. here. Somewhere, too, in my stack. So anyway, happy birthday uh, belated to Geraldine Woodward, 79. Thanks for watching. Dupuy right in the pocket, breaks up, well, a little bit of a split, but still has a tough shot here. The nine and the 10, the piece of wood is frozen to the nine pin. Tough shot that here. Is there room be. to fit through there? It may not be frozen to it. Yeah. I think it is, but I'm not sure. The way it's wiggling, I don't think so. Well, he's going to go to the left side of it and just oh, missed it. Oh, man. I might have tried to squeeze it through the between the nine and the 10. Maybe he'll try no, it this time. He's not going to do that. He's going to try that way and take a nine box. So 106 for a string for David Dupuy. Now Joe Stella with an opportunity if he can mark in one of the final two frames to take the lead into the second string. He'll miss the head pin and leave himself a tough shot. The one, the three, the six on the right, the seven pin in the left corner. Spares are at a premium today. Only three marks between these two fine bowlers here in the first game. Joe will he make the shot. It comes from behind. It taps the seven pin, but the seven pin will not go. Will oh. it go? I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the longest pin wobble I've ever man, seen. Man, oh man, oh man. I never thought that was going to go. 
Joe is uh, totally unfazed by it, isn't he? <laughs> He's been around long enough. He has. And seen just about everything. Yeah. Working on a spare, Joe Stella, right on the head pin. He will put eight in the mark. Well, that'll give him at least the victory in the first game. Very difficult spare, no wood to speak of to help. Watch out, well, watch out, don't give up on it. It's not gonna come gonna roll in front close of enough to it. Nope. He's at 109. 110 first string for Joe Stella. Four pin lead over David Dupuy. We're headed to string number two as we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Joe Stella will be first to bowl in string number two with a four-pin lead over David Dupuy as we welcome you back to Lita Lanes in Nashua. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, and Stella starts out with a strike. Kevin LaFon's our director here today. Dean Zanello's on graphics. Alex Kalistoff's on audio. Keith Webb's our engineer. Matt DiFilippo, David Lawyer, and Larry Haber, our camera crew, making it all possible for you to watch the finest bowlers in the world on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Paul Willett is our in-house scorekeeper, has been doing that for a couple of years since Chris Bovair retired from the position. So for all the people here at the lanes, they can watch and see how the scoring is over on his big easel. Joe missed a spare he'd like to have back an opportunity in that second frame to double mark, but He'll settle for 27 through the first two. Well, considering that the scoring to get into this uh, ladder was so high, it's amazing the uh, scores have been pretty low so far today, well below both these men's averages of 129 and 125. My brother Ken was telling me he was watching the show that Chris Sargent was on last week, which Chris, I think, had a 150 in the first string and then absolutely couldn't buy a mark or a score after that and it's just the nature of the game Candlepin bowling how you can't tell from string to string from box to box what's going to happen and even the bowlers are at a loss to explain why that happens 156 one string 95 the second string or whatever it was and you just say what's going on here so it's not just us Dick we get out there strike for David Dupuy in the second frame Watch it again as they all cave in. That was a quick one. Joe Stella on lane 34. We're going to get to some of your cards and letters. We got lots of them to get to. Getting a reset on lane 34 as the seven pin did not set. So there is actually time to acknowledge some mail while we wait for lane 34 to uh, to be fixed. Got an email here from uh, Eleanor Long, and she lives in Worcester, Dick, and she says, uh, I have heard you mention a few times that you are from Worcester. Really? Yeah, she's paying attention. Eleanor, thank you very much for writing. She talks about uh, bowling in Jefferson, Maine. Section of Holden, she says. Well, there's a Jefferson... Or is that Jefferson Mass? It looks like she says Maine here. Jefferson Lane, I think. No. I'm not sure where it is now. She's there was a Jefferson bowling alley in Worcester, as I recall. That may very well be what she's referring to. She's talking about the late 30s. A little before yours in my time. Well, mine, anyway. Joey Stella with back-to-back -back nine boxes. He'll step up on the fourth, lane 33. June Rawson from Burlington, Mass. writes the enclosed picture of Lake Inatow dated 1893. It's now called Horn Pond. If you read the caption at the bottom of the picture, you'll learn of the bowling alley that was on the island at oh. that time. Wow. I don't know anything more about it. 1893. On the island? There it is right where there. Where is this lake? Horn Pond. Does it say? It must be around the Burlington area. That's where she's... Woburn. Woburn, Mass. Dated 1893, Woburn, Mass, in reference to a bowling alley. And there it is right there on the island. Yep. Huh. The Native Americans. Candlepin Bowling. This bowling was in its infancy then. Bowling established Candlepin version anyway in 1880 out of uh, Worcester. 
And another punch out for David Dupuy on his first field ball on the strike, and he'll uh, put seven in the second frame. The caption of this photo, photo of Horn Pond 100 years ago, a favorite amusement resort, visitors coming from Boston and adjoining towns by the Middlesex Canal packet and by carriages to spend the day. Boating, picnicking, and a bowling alley on the island were popular attractions. Oh my. How about that? We get some really great uh, mail from people that uh, can really share a lot of history with us and with, with you as we, we relay it to you. Thank you very much. Probably should give the uh, mailing address here before we go too far. You can send it to WNDS TV, 50 Television Place, and that's in Derry, New Hampshire, 03. Oh, great shot by David Dupuy. We'll go to the break. We'll come back on that mark for David Dupuy. Joe Stella with a, well, he had the lead. Now Dupuy is about to take the lead when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Joe Stella ready to go to lane 34 at Lita Lanes. He has 44 through four. He came into the string with a four pin lead over David Dupuy, but Dupuy's gonna be working on a spare when he comes back up to the line. Missed the head pin on the left. Had pretty good roll on it, but he did not clip the head pin. That's a good shot by Joe Stella to make a very difficult spare. Second mark of the string for Stella. Watch it again. He played it perfectly right in the one three pocket. The six pin was the last to go. But it kicked over nicely on the spare. Well, he's not done yet. Watch out. He's going to get a six pin fill. Difficult spare the one two four and ten wood in front of the ten pin. Didn't even need it. He's put the top of the pin for back to back spares. So Joe responds to the mark. Watch it again as he put it right in the pocket. There it is, and it kicked off the wall nicely to take out the 10 pin. Here's David Dupuy working on a mark. He's on the head pin. He breaks up the split. Watch out, ooh, it almost kicked out the 10 pin at the end. Well, that makes it a much, much easier spare to convert. With the three and the nine out of the picture, he's got some wood on the left, and the 10 pin standing in the corner. And he used the wood to make the spare. So now the bowler's coming to life. We may actually give some bonus money away. $50 for three marks in a row. Both bowlers poised to do that. David Dupuy will go for it first here in the sixth frame. Now that looked like a very nice hit and the ball was absolutely flat, sour. It only took out four pins on a Brooklyn hit. You can tell by the body language of David Dupuy that he expected much more than that. That one got away from him. So no bonus money this time for David Dupuy. Wow, rough frame. So Joe has a chance now to put the pedal to the metal, pick up another mark, and take the lead back from Dupuy. And look for some bonus money. At the same time, he breaks up the split. So chances are pretty good now. He's got a guide piece of pin off to the right of the six pin and a couple of pins on the deck on the left. Got to keep the ball out of the gutter, and he did that. Oh, look at that, the 10 Can't pin. Can't believe that. Never would have thought no. that that pin would stand that way, but it did. No bonus money to give away. Ten bucks. Thought for sure we'd give away some bonus money there. A runner up today receives a, a prize of $200, and the winner goes on to our number three seed, Rich Hawk Hallis. And a strike for Joe Stella. Nice, smooth delivery right in the one three pocket. Watch it again. We'll catch the end of it right there. Dave Dupuy, one, three, seven, and ten with some wood scattered around the uh, the two front pins. Oh, 
Here's David Dupuis responding. So the bowlers are warming up. So what do you do to use the wood that's out there to the right of the head pin? I think I go right at the head pin and try to try and actually kick, catch the left side of the head pin. Well, he got the spin. Beautiful. Well done. Right on it. His fifth mark of the string. He's got two marks in a row looking for bonus money. Watch it again. He played it perfectly right to the right of the head pin in the 1-3 pocket. And beautiful spare for David Dupuy. Now Joe Stella. That one got away from him. Well, he's on a Still strike. on a strike. He got a little yep. break with some... Action off the backboard. Will the one pin go? Maybe better off it stays if it stays up. A piece of wood behind it. Yeah, because the count doesn't matter here. It's what he throws on this ball. That this matters. is the ball that counts. Put eight in the strike. And a nine box. He's at 115 with a box to go. So his average is 125 at a high single of. 201. He did it on his 40th birthday right here at Lita Lanes a couple of years ago. He's now 42 years of age. As you know, he's a UPS career driver out of Somerville. Daughter Cheryl is 16, Kara is 14, and young Joe, nine years old. Gave it a run. I mentioned the story in the calendar section about the Boston, about Candlepin Bowling. And uh, the Globe had a feature on the Colonial Bowling Center in Worcester, as the Worcester paper did a couple of weeks ago. So the Colonial has been written up several times. We got a, an, our copy of that Boston Globe article sent to us by uh, Carl Soule of Reading, Massachusetts. Thank you, Carl. So Joe finishes with a 124. David Dupuy right on the head pin, just five in the spare. But he'll be up against a couple of Stella open frames, so he's got a chance to uh, come in a little bit closer. Tough shot here. So he'll be open. In the ninth frame. With a nine box, he's at 111. A mark here would really tighten the matchup. Right in the pocket. Look at this. Right in the one three pocket. You got the five pin in the middle. You got the four seven on the left and the ten on the right. The ball was fading very, very quickly from left to right and didn't really get too much of the head pin. Gave it a good run. He is at 119. So the match is still within 10 pins. 120 second string for David Dupuy. It's an eight pin lead for Joe Stella headed to the third and final string of our first match of the third ladder series of the season. And we are coming right back to Lita Lanes for Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV right after this. Dave Dupuy gets set to start the third string and we have a tight match. Just eight pins separate these two fine bowlers. Joe Stella, the number four seed. Dave Dupuy, the number five seed. Dupuy will lead us off here in the third string. And he throws a good first ball and has a spare opportunity. Dupuy with a 106 in the first string and a 120 in the second string. To Joe Stella's 110 in the first string, 124 in the second string. And Dupuy starts off with a mark. No bonus money given away thus far in the match. Dave Dupuy's had some really great hits on the first, you know, the first ball, and he's just had some terrible, terrible leaves, splits, and other strange setups. That's better. Put nine in the mark and give himself another opportunity. Generally, hitting the head pin very thinly, as he's been doing, usually works better than pounding it right up the middle all the time, but it hasn't worked for him today, and that's a shame he missed the 10 pin. Looks at his hand. Just kind of went off a little bit too early and into the gutter. Best he can hope for is a 10, which he gets.
Joey Stella takes an eight pin lead into game number three. He's up first. Lane 34. Al Sculthorpe from uh, Worcester, from Holden actually, sent in a note along with an obituary, <coughs> excuse me, from George Fox, 83 years old, who died in Worcester. And it notes in his obituary he was a lifelong bowler and a member of several leagues at the Colonial Lanes over 32 years, not letting his blindness handicap his oh top my. ranking status. Wow. So our condolences to the family of George Fox Jr., who recently passed away at age 83. Got a note here from Dick Rawson from Beverly, Mass. He says, I have bowled for many years and now bowl in the senior league. We bowl for fun and have a great time every week. One of the members of my team, which is called Dick's Chicks, Bernie, is 72 years old and recently bowled a 142 strength. Wow. <laughs> I write this because I cannot find anyone, even the seniors, who knows why a game of bowling is called a string. And that's from Dick Rawson out of Beverly, Mass. Good, good question, right? It is, and there's you know, lots of things like that nobody seems to know the answers to. Is it because you've got a string of frames or boxes? That would be my first guess. Is that pin out too far? I think it's okay. Paul, well, let's go down and check it out, and he's going to look at Apparently it, it and he's going to move yep. it out. Must be close. You got two feet from the, uh, the front of the head pin forward to the bowler. That is the fair play area. Anything beyond that line, even if the pin's touching, it has to be removed. Actually, while we were talking, Michael, David Dupuy took the lead in the match. Missed the spare there. And he will take a 10 box. Pinning becomes so critical in a close match like this, which could go right down to the wire. Right in the pocket, and there they go. Perfect shot by David Dupuy, who's trying to apply a little pressure to Joe Stella. Watch it again. Right in the 1-3 pocket, and it took no time. Now Joe Stella tries to respond. Joe throws a pretty good first ball right on the head pin, leaves himself a spare opportunity with the 3 and the 6. And no wood. He needs to mark right here. He does, because David Dupuy has not left a pin standing in all four frames. Joe did not convert. Left the three pin standing. Ten box for Joe Stella. He needs marks, especially right here. He's up against a strike. Joe Stella was the uh, WCBC Rookie of the Year in 1988-89. He threw a great ball right in the one-three pocket, and look at what he has to show for it. The seven and the nine along the back row. Joe was the top seed in our 2000 Tournament of Champions, and he lost to a Chris Bovair, 359 to 343. Joe unable to convert the spare. He will be down when we go to the break. It's a 10 box. And David Dupuy has the lead. Three pins plus whatever he puts into his strike when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the conclusion of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Dave Dupuy works on a strike. He has a three-pin lead over Joe Stella, plus whatever he puts into the strike. With six boxes remaining in the match, he trailed by eight pins going into the third string, and now he has the lead, and he puts up a half Worcester. So the lead is five. Oh, he's got one more ball to fill the strike. I take it back. I beg your pardon. Lucky for him. And he'll put seven in the strike. So it's a 10-pin lead. And a nine box. So Joe Stella needs to start miking. If you'd like to join us for our next taping, there's the date, the 9th of December. We'll begin at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's mixed doubles as we digress from our ladder series competition. Always a popular feature for the fans and the bowlers. Men and women will be teaming up for four weeks. And it creates a lot of fun. As we tape today, this is November 11th, Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Good crowd on hand, too. And yes, and a few more than usual because uh, most kids aren't out in school. A lot of people had the day off from work. So 
Good crowd. We've always got room for you, though, with uh, donuts and coffee as well. Uh, Ray Simino and Sean Howard and the whole crew really put out a nice spread for everybody. And I make saw you, feel you welcome. wolfing down a couple of donuts I, this morning, Just one, I, huh? which don't give my secrets away. Very rarely that I'll do that, but uh, I said today I'm going to treat myself. Joe needs a mark, and he's got a tough shot. The five is in the middle, the seven, eight, and nine along the back row. Not going to make it, so he'll be open. He's open through the first five boxes of the third string. A very inopportune time to go cold, and that's going to be a nine box. A 47 half for Joe Stella. Senior Professional Canopin Bowling Association. The results from their October 18th and 19th tournament in Southampton, Mass at Canal Lanes. Winner for the men is the gentleman you'll see next week, Dick, Rich Hallis. Coming in at 697 and winning $450 for the women. Chris Corona, congratulations, beating out Mel Anorato, Debbie Matrenya, Judy Wichter, and Sherry Siklecki. And I do apologize for any names I may be butchering along the way. Joe needs to mark here. He got it. The big mark by Joe Stella in the sixth frame. Now we've got a horse race heading down the home stretch. Of course, a strike in despair would tie things up. Is Dave Dupuy missed the head pin? Tough shot here. The one, the three, and the six on the right. The four and the seven on the left. No wood to help out. Look at that oh, shot by my. David Dupuy. Pressure shot, money shot. For Great David shot Dupuis. by Dupuy. He played the head pin on the outside. The ball took care of the four and the seven. The head pin took care of the three and the six. Watch it again. The four horsemen and the ten pin for a five fill. Not going to make it. So he'll be open in the eighth. The one, the seven, and ten, otherwise now known as the high-low jack. Don't ask me where that nickname originated. I couldn't tell you. Good shot. It's going to be a nine box. Well, Joe Stella now will need a mark to take the lead. He's working on a spare. Needs a good fill. He's got that. He puts seven in the spare. He's got a makeable shot here with the wood out front. But he's also up against a spare, so he really needs this one right here. He's got the spare. Now, Dupuy just had a five in his spare. Well, this is a very, this is the pivotal match frame for Joe Stella right here. Just puts five in the spare. So I believe three pins separate the bowlers. Oh. Box to box, if I'm not mistaken. That's going to be off the head pin. So if he makes a 10 here, I think it'll be a two pin lead. That is correct. And that's what we have. Look at this. Two boxes to go and a two pin lead for David Dupuy. The number five seed in this current ladder. Next week, Rich Hallis. Two weeks from today, Rich Lottie. And Anthony Pastore is the top seed. You'll see him in three weeks. Two pins separate these bowlers. Two boxes to go. Tough shot here for David Dupuy. He threw it right at the head pin. And look at what he has. The six and ten on the right. The seven and the eight along the back row to the left. Yeah, he's debating whether or not to play the wood on the left. I think I might have to do I that. I think you do, yeah. Because even if you slice over the six pin over to the other side, you're only probably going to take out one of the pins. That's what he's doing. He got the... He got the pins to spray. Yeah, they just did. didn't spray in the right direction. Well, he pinning is important he here. Needs, yes, he needs nine to four Stella to mark. And He's got an eight. That. So if Joe just gets a ten in the ninth, we've got a tie match. Nail biting time for both these great candle pin bowlers. He threw another good first ball, and he's got another split to show for it. Now the question is, will the ball take that piece of wood? I 
don't think so. I think there's too much space there. Yeah, there is. He's surveying the situation. Big shot here. Open frame in the 10th. Has the door is attempt. open for Joe Stella. It's a nine box. And Joe, a couple of tens and Joe wins. 19 pins to tie, 20 to win. A tie sends us to a two box overtime. It's happened a handful of times over the years we've had the show. May not be necessary. Joe with an opportunity. And that is not good wood. Got to play the left side of the wood. That's what he did, and he missed the shot. Didn't go far enough left or far enough right. He split the difference. The pressure is still on Joe Stella, who could have pretty much wrapped it up. And now Nine box. he needs a mark to win. A 10 will tie it. And we'll reset the scoreboard for a two-frame roll-off. Joe Stella needs a mark to win. Needs a 10 to tie. It's going to be probably a tie. Nine. He's got to keep the ball on the alley yep. right here. And he did. So we'll go overtime. <laughs> Two boxes. All right. So I'm going to reset the, uh, the score. You take a look at it, folks, because we're going to erase it now. Actually, we can't. We'll Dave Zupuy, we got it right here. Two boxes. Had one or two ties over I think the course two, of the last six years. Dupuis, will he get it? Will he get it? He will get it. Wow. Tough shot. Great spare for Dave Dupuis. One mark in a two frame match is huge, Dick. Now he'll hope for a good fill. Now on the fill, he threw it right at the head pin. Will he break up the spare? Break up the split. He did that, and now he's got another opportunity. I think he's got to go way to the right yep. of that piece of wood. You Forget the front wood. Go to the back wood. Hit right in the V. Where the two pins come together. So he went right to the head pin. Oh, he paid it. He got it two yeah. marks in a row. So the pressure is on Joe Stella. And he'll throw a fill ball now, which he'll need to do. But he'll only throw one. So the best he can do is 39, and that's, boy, that's going to be tough to beat. Very tough to beat. Right on the head pin, and it's going to be an eight pin fill, so a 37. Wow. <laughs> for David Dupuy. And that's what Joe Stella is looking at. He needs to mark, just that simple. He needs to mark in both, front, both boxes. He threw a good first ball. Now, of course, to have a double overtime. I don't believe we've had that, have we? Missed the spare, and that's the match. Well, he could actually strike out, though. You're right. He could throw a double, double strike. strike. Yep. So it isn't over it's yet. It's not mathematically over. A, two he strikes needs a double and an strike. Yep. If he does not strike, it's over. Wow. Watch out. That's it's it. not going to be a strike. So David Dupuy will be our winner. He defeats Joe Stella in overtime. We'll come back to meet our bowlers at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Right after this on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Joe Stella and David Dupuy tied at 342 for the triple. And then in overtime, it was Dupuy winning 37 to 29 to advance to next week's match against Hawk Hallis. Joe Stella is with us here. We'll give him the runner-up check for $200 and $50 in bonus money for having the highest string in the match. You were the higher seed in the match, which meant you got to go last in the overtime. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage? Would you rather go first or second when you face extra boxes? I think I'd rather go second and see what I needed to win. But in this case, I didn't want to go second. I know I needed two mocks, and it was going to be tough. I knew that. Well, Joe,